Hello everyone! In this Applied Mathematics and Engineering tutorial we will learn how to derive the Taylor series expansion formula from scratch. But before we start, let us first talk about the main motivation for learning how to derive a mathematical formula. Namely, a number of professors will force you to memorize formulas or they will say don't memorize formula, you have tables, just look into the tables. In my opinion, both of these approaches are fundamentally wrong, and by blindly following them, you will never be able to develop a logical and precise way of thinking that is very important for being a successful engineer, scientist, or a physicist. By learning how to derive formulas, you will develop a logical way of thinking, and you will develop an ability to mathematically analyze physical problems and mathematically formulate their solutions. Consequently, to help you to become a better and more successful engineer, scientist, or a physicist, in these lectures I will teach you how to derive important formulas that every engineer should know. Also, derivations of these formulas should be understood as a mental exercise that will help you to develop important analytical skills. But before I start with explanations, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as more than 300 free video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot! Let us consider a real function of a real argument where x is the independent variable. Let us assume that this function is sufficiently smooth and differentiable. Then, we can represent this function by using the Taylor series expansion given by this formula over here. So, what's happening over here? You take your function f of x, you compute these constants ki, where i can go from 0 to infinity, and you multiply with this term over here, and you take the power. Here, a is a point about which we are approximating the function. The coefficients ki are determined by this formula. Okay, let's explain this formula. This symbol, f, and in the superscript, in the bracket, i, is the ith derivative of the function f. This symbol means that this ith derivative is evaluated or computed at the point a, and over here we have i factorial. That is, we divide the result by i factorial. Okay, let's write down these coefficients for different values of i. Let's do that. For example, when i is equal to 0, we have that k0 is 0 to the derivative of our f evaluated at a divided by 0 factorial, and that's 1. 0 derivative of the function f is simply our function f evaluated at a divided by 1. How about i is equal to 2? Let's see what happens. k2 is the second derivative of our function evaluated, or better to say computed at a divided by 2 factorial. How about the expression for i is equal to 4? Mm -hmm k4 is the fourth derivative of our function f evaluated a divided by 4 factorial. And we know that the 4 factorial is actually 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. The main purpose of this video tutorial is to teach you how to easily derive this formula. And these coefficients uniquely determine our Taylor series expansion. But before we derive this formula, let us first give a few remarks. The Taylor series expansion is used in physics and engineering for approximating functions. For example, we can approximate the function f of x by using a lower order polynomial over here. We just truncate the Taylor series expansion after three or four terms and we obtain a lower order polynomial. Or we can use a higher order polynomial, such as the one shown over here. We truncate the Taylor series expansion after eight terms over here. 
These approximations are, are illustrated in this figure over here. Let's explain this graph. The black line is our original function, and we want to approximate our function around the point A shown over here. This magenta or purple line is the Taylor series approximation by using lower order polynomial. We can see that this approximation is relatively accurate if we are very close to the point A. However, as we go further from the point A, it becomes less accurate. To improve the accuracy, we introduce a higher order terms. That is, we consider the Taylor series approximation by using the higher order terms. And we obtain this red line. We can see that this red line more accu accurately approximates the function in the neighborhood of our A. However, as we increase the approximation neighborhood, we can see that we still have errors. We can decrease these errors by increasing the order of the polynomial. Next, let us now explain how to derive the coefficients k0, k1, k2, k3, etc. Let us expand the Taylor series formula and consider this formula over here. What is f of a? If you substitute here a, this term, this term, this term, this term, and all other terms containing x minus a will become 0, and consequently f of a is k0. That is, k0 is the value of the function at f of a. Next, let us compute the first derivative of this expression. First derivative of k0 is 0. First derivative of this term is simply k1. The first derivative of this term is 2k2x minus a. The first derivative of this term is obviously 3k3 multiplying x minus a squared. And the first derivative of this term is 4k4 multiplying x minus a to the power 3. Let us now see what is the value of the first derivative at a. Obviously, this term will die out, this term will die out, and this term will die out, as well as all other terms containing x minus a. They will become 0. And consequently, we obtain this formula. Or we can write this formula like this. k1 is the first derivative of f evaluated at a divided by 1 factorial. And you can already see a pattern over here. You can see that we have a first derivative here, and we divide the result by 1 factorial. Next, let us take the derivative of the first derivative. And here is the expression. It is 2k2 plus 3 times 2k3 multiplying x minus a plus 4 times 3 multiplying k4 multiplying x minus a squared. And a similar pattern repeats over here. Aha! Uh -huh. Let us now try to evaluate this expression at a. Obviously, we will obtain 2k2, and consequently k2 is the second derivative of f evaluated by a divided by 2. And that's obviously second derivative of a divided by 2 factorial. Uh -huh. The pattern repeats itself. Perfect. Let us now take another derivative of this expression, and as the result, we obtain this expression. Again, let us evaluate this expression at a, and as the result, we obtain this term over here. And from the right-hand side, we can express k3. And again, here is the pattern. Third derivative of f evaluated at a divided by 3 factorial. We can proceed further and repeat this whole procedure by taking the derivative of this expression to obtain something that looks like this. And if we evaluate this expression at a, we obtain this right-hand side. From here, we can express k4 and again, 4 derivative of a divided by 4 factorial. By using this principle, we can show that the formula given by 17 is valid and this is exactly the formula 2 and consequently we derive this formula okay that would be all for today I hope that you like this video if you like the videos I create please press the like and subscribe buttons thanks a lot and have a nice day